What up, though? And welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by Detroit Lions on the Prowl and Lions Nation Unite. It's your man, Kurt Steele. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, on deck for today's show. LL discusses how some help may be on the way from for the Lions defense. And I look at the recent bad luck in the second round of the draft for the Lions and how they open as a slight underdog versus New England coming up on Sunday. But before we do all that, it's time to bring in the rest of the crew, man. Today is just me and my dude, man. My man, LL Cool Torrance. What's going on, brother? Good morning, Proud Nation, and shout out to Coach Mike. Yeah, man. If you don't know, uh, Coach Mike, he is, his wife's having a procedure this morning, so he will not be in with us. All our thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family, right? So, uh, man, shout out to him, man. He'll be back soon. But, you know, man, let's get this thing started right now. Lego. It's Detroit Lions talk, baby. Welcome back to the show, people, man. Hey, like my man Country Wayne say all the time over there on Facebook, help is on the way. What we got, LL? Some young players may be helping this defense real soon. Yeah, well, um, we may get some guys that we are all anticipating uh, back back soon. Um, headline says, Detroit Lions considering returning Jerry Jacobs and Josh Pascal to practice this week. This headline comes from uh, PrideofDetroit.com. Um, Article written by Jeremy Reisman, or Reisman, if I'm saying that right. I feel like I say his name wrong. Jeremy Every Reisman. Time, but, <laughs> Reisman. Right, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but in this article, they talk about um, Dan Campbell's press conference yesterday where they, he spoke about uh, potentially bringing back um, second-year player Jerry Jacobs and rookie Josh Pascal. And there's a quote here. It says, we're talking about starting Jerry's clock and Pascal potentially Wednesday. Campbell said. Um, of course, Jerry Jacobs suffered a, um, a torn ACL last uh, last December. Um, and Pascal, um, you know, he had hurt himself in college and everything. And then he had ended up uh, with a sports hernia um, in, in early OTAs and early training camp and ended up needing uh, surgery for that. But um, it, it goes on to share a little bit of information. It says, when both he and Pascal return to practice, it opens a 21-day window. Um, and that's the clock that uh, Dan Campbell is referring to. Um, and then with that, and in that 21 day window, the team, uh, the team can officially activate them to the 53 man roster. If they don't activate the player within that 21 day window, then they're out for the season. Right. Activating them obviously requires a subsequent move to open up a roster spot. Before the end, the players can practice without counting against the roster. Also, in this article, they said that um, you know, they were considering bringing Jerry Jacobs back, uh, you know, week one. I didn't know that part. Yeah, I, I heard he was he close. Real good. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that part. So I think mm -hmm. I think uh, Jerry Jacobs is, is a whole lot sooner to come back than, than Josh Pascal. It might take a little bit more of that uh, of that clock to say to get uh, Pascal ready. But I think Jerry Jacobs should be back pretty soon, or we can get both of them back at the same time. That'd be great. Um, of course, we need that. Um, and Josh Cas and Josh Pascal's case, we are missing. Uh, we are missing John Kaminsky. So he, I feel like he could fit nicely into that role. Right. And as for Jerry Jacobs, uh, the whole back end needs to be looked at. So I don't, <laughs> I don't think we can get no worse. We we might have could have started him, you know, with half a knee. So mm -hmm. who knows? But I think Jerry Jacobs is going to add a, a a needed physicality to the secondary. Right. You know, um, uh, like what we seen some from from uh, from Okuda, you know, locking down on guys, you know, being being with him at the line of scrimmage. Jerry Jacobs can do some of those same things. So I'm I'm kind of excited to see these guys come back. What about you, Kurt? All right. So for me. Jerry Jacobs, man, he's a good slot corner. Uh, but it's not like Mike Hughes has been playing bad, you know. The whole secondary has been playing poorly, but Mike Hughes right. hasn't been playing, you know, as as bad as some other guys. Now, here's my thing. I, can they kind of ease him back in? Now, if AO continues to struggle at on the outside, I, they may put a Hughes on the outside and then slide uh, uh, Jacobs into his nickel spot. Or it could be a kind of a evolution how we saw Quandre Dix. He was that undersized uh, nickel corner, and they moved him to free safety. What what did he do out there? Went out there and made the Pro Bowl. I mean, these are some of the yeah. things that I'm kind of, you know, spinning around in my mind about him returning. Uh, for that defensive line, man, Pascal, hopefully he can bring a needed boost, man. We need something 
right now. I mean, we're blitzing. We're sending everybody. Poor man is not getting there. Uh, and like you said, he could do that Kaminsky thing. Where he can line up at D tackle. He can line up at D end like he did at Kentucky. I hope these l- young players uh, can get some help to this struggling defense, man, <laughs> really, really fast because we need it post haste, uh, expeditiously or PDQ pretty damn quick. <laughs> That's all that means, I like man. that. I like man. that. I like that. Um, man. <laughs> what you got? I like that. Um, what you said, P- PDQ. But of course, if you like this content, go ahead and throw us some thumbs up, man. Share some of them likes. Share this with your friends. Share this with your Lions fans. Out there, if you got one guy that you talk lines with in the office, go ahead and tell him about us, man. Jo- help him join the prowl. We on that march to a million. But the next stop is 4K, so go ahead and bring as many people with you on this prowl train, baby. Uh, what's the family discussion topic for today, Kurt? Man, topic, family topic, uh, will these players have an impact on the defense? Because we need it. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if you, if you are you looking for them to have a big impact, a small impact, or any impact at all. Let us know in the comments, man. Y'all know how we get down, man. We pick six of those things, six of them to read on the next show. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things, man. We want to um, interact with you right here on Detroit Lions and the Proud, your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. Uh, you know, we got to pay some bills right quick. Man, hey, man, you're going to you're gonna get yourself some Lions gear. I know you're going to do it, man. Go on over to fanatics.com and the links in the description below. You see, I'm wearing some fresh fanatics t shirt. You know, I got the dog on 2022 sideline cap on, man. <laughs> Get all my stuff right there at fanatics.com and they have a great specials going on. So go ahead, man. Grab yourself some gear right there at fanatics.com. The links in the description below, man. And you know, help the show out. We know how you do it. But uh, if you're gonna check us out on another social media platform beside YouTube, go over to Lions Nation Unite, man. It is the ultimate virtual hangout for Detroit Lions fans. All your favorite Detroit Lions content creators are over there. Those are Dion, you got Rad, Royal Lions UK, Micro Mike. All those guys are right there in Lions Nation Unite. And you don't have to leave the app to watch those programs, man. You can watch them right there inside the app, man. And you can go over and check out the LNU shot, man. It's always game day. And LNU Shop, man, you can get yourself some great gear over there at LNUShop.com. Check us out on Detroit Lions on the Proud.com. You know, we got some different content over there. And while you're over there, get yourself some Proud Nation gear over at Lions on the Proud Shop.com. Man, if you are a Wolverine on Saturday and a Lion on Sunday, because we're always thinking about our guy, Coach Mike Jones will hook you up, man. Links in the description below for Wolverlion.com, man. Man, you know. Sparty, I know you're having a hard time right now. You come, come, come on over, get yourself some Wolf of Lion gear, man. Be part of the winning tradition right here on Detroit Lions of the Pride with the Wolf of Lions, man. Up uh, with all that being said, man. Hey, it do it's cancer or wear this month. You know what October is. Go ahead and support the American Cancer Society of Michigan, which is Roar Up Gear by our man Big Lion Man. The links in the description below, man. He helping for that. Uh, battle with cancer by supporting the American Cancer Society of Michigan. So get yourself some roll up gear right down there in the link, man. All right, so now it's time to get back into some of this content right quick, fast, in a hurry. Man, I don't know about you, Ella, but let's, the Lions has just had a history of bad luck in the second round, man. Uh, you just look at this. I don't know whether it's bad decisions, injured players, bad fit bad coaching but the lions have struggled to find the right players in the second round of the nfl draft let's take a look at who the lions have drafted in the second round and since 2022 now we're going back to 11 years right so you know with 10 plus one all right so we go back 2012 we drafted ryan bros he was already hurt coming out of oklahoma never really got his career started injuries just you know just mounted up in detroit Darius Slay, 2013. Now, that was a good pick, but bad coaching ran him out of town. Bad coaching. That was, that was a, you know, we started off slow, but bad coaching ran that guy out of Detroit. Uh, 2014, we had linebacker Kyle Vanoy. Kyle Vanoy was never a good fit in Detroit. It just wasn't a good fit for him and the Lions. He went to the New England and won the Super Bowl, a couple of them, but as far as his time in Detroit, he was never a good fit. Can we agree with that, my man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was well, never. I think yeah. they might have been trying to play him out of position, too, but yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Now, 2015, we had Amir Abdullah. 
fumble itis himself, man. That dude couldn't hold up to the ball for nothing, man. That dude, like he had, like he had water on his fingers all the time, man. Uh, I, I like the mirror Abdullah. I actually had a, a mirror Abdullah jersey, man, but it was like, eh, you're killing me. You're killing me, Shawty. You're killing me. Uh, 2016, we had A. Shot Robson. Now it was a good pick for us, but he was a journeyman guy. Even out there in LA, he was never that, he never turned into the starter that we thought he was going to be. I mean, he just never did. And then a bad coach, he ran him out of town too. He had, he had a solid, he had a solid playoff run last year um, mm -hmm. in LA, and you know, good game in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Now here we we start the big slide because not a nan, not a one of these guys, <laughs> except for one guy, uh, had really a, as having a decent career in Detroit. Twenty seventeen, T's paper, horrible pick. Guy ran a four nine forty. I believe my uh my eight year old granddaughter can run a faster forty than T table. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that dude just just terrible. All right, twenty eighteen injury prone. Carry on Johnson, running back. Always injured down there at Auburn. Now the biggest head scratcher of all. Twenty nineteen, Jelani Tavai. When the when you play you play stump you stay stump the truck that's what they play over there at the draft at NFL Network where they they they're looking for a guy who they have no tape on. We did it in the second round, but I just drafted to like they had no clue who the hell that guy was, man. They just kind of looked around and was like they just kind of just skipped to the next guy because it was like we had they had no idea who this dude was and neither did most of the Lions fan base. Now he had, a, he had a decent he had a decent start here but that's a decent a very decent start yeah it didn't last long now 2020 we had <laughs> we had deandre swift now deandre swift he has electric and spurts man but it's just the injury bugs it just kills me with deandre swift now i like don't get me wrong i like deandre swift man that's uh one of my favorite lines right now on the team man but he's just injury prone it's every i mean even with this week my man uh do said he wanted to go but he's just was hurt and it was like now nah. now here we go 2021 we drive the uh, defensive tackle levi on he's injured coming coming to the lions camp injured with a back injury hasn't played how many games has he, has he played in detroit probably what four or five handful if that kind of on one hand and then yeah, we played four or five last year i think so i don't know if he played that many games last year I feel like he played more than that. I don't know how many more, but I feel like he played more than I, I, I don't five. know. Uh, let's see. Let's look it up right quick. I can tell you how many game splits that he had from last year. I can tell you how many games that he played last year because, you know, I can look that up right quick. It's too easy, right? Uh, let's just say he played in – they sure I say he played in – 16 games last year. No, he did not. No, he, he ain't hurt. playing 16. No, he he probably played in about because looking at his defensive stats from last year, it was not that great. No, nah. he had he had two pass defenses and he had a total of 15 tackles. No, I'm sorry, 35 tackles. That's not no. He did not play in. He did not play in sixteen games last year. He probably played in about no. four or five. <laughs> that has to be because he was hurt. He was injured. I, I remember being hurt, but I just I, I feel like he. I feel like he played more than four or five. That's all I'm saying. I don't know, I don't but know. I feel he, like he played. He he may have, but I might just be over over exaggerating it. But and then we drafted Josh Pascal this year. The guy was already hurt, coming off an injury from college, and. What do we get? Hadn't even took the field yet. We're on the fourth game of the season for a rookie who was supposed to make a deep a de uh, a a impact on our defensive line. Excuse me, and we hadn't even seen the field yet. I mean, I know it's not his fault. He had a sports hernia injury in camp. You know, I can't blame him on that. But the guys coming in injured already. So you look at these guys, eleven players, right? Either bad fit, bad decisions injuries or bad coaching you look at all the, those factors going to that second round man we need to find a a a better i don't know technique strategy or whatever it is to draft a player in the second round and it's just not there it is just I, i'm telling you 
It's just not there. It is is if you look at the Detroit Lions, man, I can go back a few more years and just to kind of like give you a a, a kind of breakdown of some of the guys that we take we took we took in the second round. Yeah. Uh one 20, of the guys come to mind is uh Titus, uh, what was it Titus? Yeah, 20, 2011, Young? Titus Young. Great player, just terrible. Just yeah. terrible. One of my favorite lines we drafted off the in field stuff. Yeah, off the field stuff. And twenty and two thousand nine, we had one of my favorite lines, but he could he couldn't stay healthy. Lewis Delmas, Lewis Delmas, man, Del- man, that, could, dude, could he, where did he was, Delmas go? Where did Delmas go? Did he, he I went somewhere? In I, he, okay, I think he went to he, he went to Miami, I believe. Yeah, he went to Miami, believe. I mean, look at this guy, uh, two thousand eight, Jordan Dazon. I don't even remember him. I don't. I don't, I don't, even, I don't even remember that guy at all. Twenty two thousand seven. We had Drew Stanton and e, e, Aka, uh Alain Francis, Alain Francis out of the defensive end out of Hawaii. I don't know who that who the hell is this guy? Who's this guy? I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm just going back. I'm 2006. We had Daniel Bullocks out of Nebraska, defensive back. 2005. We had Sean Cody. Now Sean Cody played decent. He was a defensive tackle in Detroit. Sean um, Cody, big baby. Sean Cody was the man. Sean, Sean Cody, Cody was, was good. Legit. Sean Cody was good. 2004, we had Teddy Lehman out of Oklahoma. Trash. Was, was he an <laughs> offensive lineman or something? No, he was, he was a linebacker. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I remember. 2003, we had a good one. We had Boss Bailey, but he didn't, you know, of course, he didn't last. Injuries cut him, you know. Kaleem, uh, Kalimba Edwards in 2002. I mean, it's just not. Uh, you look at the the probably the best second round we had was in two thousand one when we had Dominic Raola and Sean Rogers drafted in the same second round. Those and that's two. who? What was the other name you said? Because that's I was sitting there thinking like, wait a minute, I'm thinking about Sean Rogers. I said, yeah, Sean, yeah, Sean Rogers. Who oh, the other guy was? Uh, yeah. the other guy was Kalimba Edwards. I don't no, know who that no, is. No, no, the um the other defensive tackle. It was um uh, oh, defensive lineman. Yes, the yeah. defensive uh, lineman. Sean Cody. Sean okay. Cody. That's what it was. I, I confused the two with Sean Rogers. My yeah. apologies. Yeah. Sean so, Rogers is big. My my apologies. Big baby. Yeah. Sean Cody was trash. <laughs> yeah. So you look at that. <laughs> We've had a I, I just think we have to get better at drafting in the second round, man. We gotta do something. I know sometimes it's that needle in the haystack type of guy, but we gotta get better in the second round, man. It's it's just we're we're spinning our wheels. Um because you know we all draft picks are hit and miss, man. Of course we know this, but we had to do. You know, you get sometimes you get a bona fide starter in the second round, man. But we had got to. What's that? Uh, my people from Baltimore, man, got to be more careful, man. Uh, I honestly, I, I honestly think that drafting in the second round should be easier because it's like a lot of the guys that might have been projected to go in the first round, you know, mm-hmm. and they, you know, it might have been some surprise pick. Yeah. They kind of pushed them to the second round. So I at least that's how I think of it, you know, and I think that's how some other teams think of it. You know, I feel like I was just watching a um I watched a YouTube video yesterday on uh just randomly. It was like uh players pick one spot before a Hall of Fame. Yeah. And it was like, man, it was you know, like so, you know, same scenario. It's like, golly, like who would have ever thought to pick him over yeah. Ray Lewis? Who would have ever thought? Yeah, to pick him over Cortez, can you know just some of these names? Like God damn, what the hell? Mm-hmm. So you know, it's you know, hopefully yeah. we get that 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 kind of figured out. Um, you know, we had a horrible track record. Um, yeah, I, I still got <laughs> I still got faith in uh I still got faith in Levi, and I still got faith in Josh Pascal to at least do something. You know, Levi Levi came on last yeah. year. He wasn't well. Like I I I, I said he wasn't the ass kicker that I thought he was gonna be, but mm-hmm. I feel like he got. I said I feel like he still got a little bit of time. Now, Jim and I, when we did our de- the draft preview of that draft, uh, I mean, Azarike was one of the players that we where we profiled, and we thought you know it would have been a decent uh, draft pick as well. The thing is, is, like Dan Campbell said in his press, he said his like his injury is not getting better at all. He said this, the knee was not moving. Uh, to, to a guy from like me, I have a I have a back injury. I have three screws in my back, man, and mm. that's one thing. And especially playing mm. a, a collision sport like football, I, I don't know. I don't know if I see him playing long term in the NFL. I I just don't. Mm, maybe I, not. I just don't. Maybe not. I just don't see it. 
Hey, man, if you like the content, man, like the video, share the video, comment on the video, man. Hey, get us to go ahead and get to that 4K, man. Get on the bus, Gus, get on this train, Wayne, get on this ride, Clyde, man. And it's free. It's free, free. If you need more free, it's free 99 and 53 cents to click the subscribe button, man. The notification bell so you know when you're getting press content from us right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. You're home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, baby. Hey, follow us on your favorite social media platforms, you know, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, it's Tuesday. That means we're only two days away from Thursday, Thursday, man. So go ahead on Thursday and check out my bad <laughs> LL page on Thursday. It's another man. good Tuesday. On, it's another good Tuesday on the internet. I, I don't yeah. know if I can say that on here. No, nah, you can't. No, nah, you can't say that on here. But <laughs> I digress, man. Hey, let's give you a quick update on the on the betting line for the Lions uh and the Patriots uh for the game on Sunday. The Lions open up as three-point underdogs heading into New England. Uh, the over-under is 46 and a half right now with a chance of going up with the, how many points that Detroit Lions score and give up. <laughs> so <laughs> the betting line could go up phenomenally uh, as far as the over-under, man. The over-under for last week games was 50, and we scored, and then with the combined was 90. So, like I said, uh, I think with the Detroit Lions, I think you always bet the over <laughs> Because we go, we're gonna score some, we're gonna give some up too. <laughs> That's just how do we go right now? Uh, the rest of the betting lines that are right now, Detroit are plus 135 as an underdog, meaning if you bet a hundred dollars, you will get a hundred and thirty-five dollars, and it's minus 160 for the Patriots, meaning if you bet a hundred and sixty dollars, you will get a hundred. So those are the betting lines to open up for the uh, Lions and Patriots, we will update that when we keep doing our preview shows. You know, check back on Thursday when we do our, you know, the game preview, and we will have the updating betting lines for you right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Yo, home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. Now it's time for us to do one thing, man. Zip our lip and see what you had to say about yesterday's show. Man, y'all had some long comments today, man. <laughs> I don't, man, y'all was writing encyclopedias in this joke. But let's get into these comment cards, man. First up, uh, our man Shaman comes in and said, this is insane. Did you, the Lions defense was absolutely Absolutely flaming garbage. Absolutely. I was so I was so pissed off yesterday. I was turning red. There, there is clearly not the <laughs> same on lives because the same on lives would have scored 15 and not 45. Uh, we, don't, we don't need a we uh, don't need a defense showing the uh, a last uh, showing the worst of the Lions defense montage. Uh, we need a we need a steel wall that that doesn't let anything through. AG and all defensive coaches be better in the damn hot seat in the morning. They better be in the hot seat in the morning. Uh, yeah, they they Dan Campbell has said that they they're looking at shaking some things up personnel wise and on the defensive side of the ball. And he said he, he's already made tough decisions before, and he's not afraid of not afraid to make them again. Uh -huh. I'm talking about Anthony Lynn and possibly with AG. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, AJ get that thing turned around. Thanks for yeah. the comment, though, Shaman. Mm -hmm. uh, new to the comment, at least new to me to the comment cards. Yeah. Uh, friend Hunter Volker, 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 my apologies, says, um, L.O. Cool, I can't go with your take on this one, my dude. The offense is and was amazing. It don't matter if J.G. throws three pick sixes. If we're scoring 45, we should be winning, period. Duh. Take away <laughs> the pick six and Seahawks still score 20 more points than they should have in the first place. I agree. Mm -hmm. I don't want the offense to change a thing other than deep rotations for health concerns. Mm -hmm. Defense needs a major overhaul. Number one, Anzalone belongs nowhere near a field on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. Um, number two, AD deserves the hot seat after the last few airs falling 100% on the defense. Mm -hmm. As irritating as it is to see Miss uh, point, uh, point out the PAT, um, it wasn't the kicker's fault either. It's either – It'll either light a fire under AG or expose them. Either way, it benefits us in the end. I mm -hmm. agree. Um, but see, I don't necessarily feel right pointing just one finger because it was other things as well. And if you ever say that about JG throwing three pick sixes and we score 45, I mean, duh, number one, but we don't want that anyway. Like, that's nah. why would you want that? Now, you now, want I, that? I will say this. I, I didn't like the slight by Dan Campbell on that one. Like, he was like, well, you we spotted them six points. Dude, we could. We no, we spotted them way more than six points on the defense. Yeah, <laughs> we spotted yeah. them way, bro. Yeah, I, I, I no, nah, I can't, I can't say that it's not, it, it wasn't cool by uh, throwing a pick six because it's not. Is you don't want your quarterback to do that. But you got to look at the rest of the game. The dude was nominated 
here's the deal. I think this is one of the first times where two players, the, the winning quarterback and the losing quarterback, was nominated for the FedEx Air Player of the Week. It's crazy. that Jer Jared Goff put up some stats on Sunday. And he did. I mean, he kept a, He was the reason why we were – if we'd have got that stop and we could have – there's no – if we'd have got that stop in the fourth quarter, there's no way in hell I don't think we could we could have won that game with the way Goff right. was playing. But had we not thrown that pick six, it might be a little different too. You know, it's just a lot of it's a yeah. lot of blame pad to go around. Yeah, was that if 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 was butts and coconuts or whatever that however that saying go. All right, Michael L L Lade says I think it's how you say the name. The Seahawks obviously show we still have some glaring issues. No duh, mostly on defense. I think we needed this game. There were no uh, gimme games in the NFL. Every team has players that can expose you. Of course, I was hot on Jeff uh, shutting down DK. I was not uh, because he was chirping. <laughs> I, I was not. I think he needed that safety help over the top. I just think that that was the way they were playing it. Why not continue that? Of course, with that, with a guy like DK Metcalf, why wouldn't you help out the guy? Everybody needs help on DK Metcalf because <laughs> this is who he mm -hmm. is. Uh, but I also uh, said I was afraid of, of giving up the big class plays. And, to, uh, and lo and behold, Gino was letting it fly. Dude, that damn bootleg was ridiculous. But knowing that these guys are on defense, they were going to work the heck out of uh, those mistakes relentlessly because uh, what else they can they do? They cannot. They got to work it to get better. You can't get any worse than uh, we might be facing Billy Zappa, you know what I'm saying? And so we have to bounce uh, back. Otherwise, some sort of change will have to be made on that side of the ball. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, what was his name? Matt. Go ahead. My bad. My bad. Who? Who? Uh, Michael Lede. No, I was gonna say. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Matt Flynn. You oh yeah. Matt Flynn. Yeah, I remember Matt. Yeah, Matt Flynn smoked our ass. <laughs> yeah, I remember. That. I think that's what's about to happen on Sunday. Well, it, it, that's what bet not happen on Sunday. Yeah, I don't you know it's a uh, bye week coming up, and teams usually fire people right before that bye week. So, Ag, hopefully, you don't let Billy Zappy turn get a uh, get a max contract off of. Yeah, for um, real. But my and my apologies for interrupting you at the end as well. Go ahead, but, man. Uh, ahead. Friend of the show, King SJ says, um, I give the Lions defense an A grade. A for atrocious. Yes, And Chief baby. a nice try. Yeah. <laughs> was it e, e for nice effort and Chief a nice try. Shout yeah, to, uh, I, I, I can't, to, uh, I can't even give down. him that, man. That wouldn't be a nice try. Uh, <laughs> friend of the show, <laughs> La, Joseph Ruddock and Associates, man, the law firm. Yeah. So it's been a while since I dropped a comment here. Uh, hope y'all are doing good. But uh, we are doing okay. Bottom line, Patricia's and then New England with the offense. If AG can't put together a game plan to stop them, then AG must also be removed for pure logic of not being able to beat Patricia. We're one and three. They're one and three. I absolutely agree with you, Joseph Murdoch. I didn't put that. Together. That is a good point. Goddamn, man. This. I don't like that. That just added a whole nother layer of bullshit to me. This is going to be the Matt Patricia <laughs> fold. Mm -hmm. You already know what's going to happen, man. Mm -hmm. Rich Bean says, um, good show again, fellas. Offense and Jared handled their business for having a resolving or evolving group of receivers. Defense was unbearable. I think they need more veteran presence. I think they should go after Roquan, maybe. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, make him a solid offer. Out on the um, out of the IR and PUP, I need at least six of those guys to be getting ready to be activated after the bye. We need all hands on deck. Um, I don't even know if we got six of them on the um, on those lists. Oh yeah, we we yeah, got I agree with we you. got it's plenty. Big. We, we got all hands on. Deck. We got plenty of them cats on the injured reserve, yeah. man. Uh, let I, I'll take a. I, I'm telling you, yeah. I think we have. I think the Lions have the most injured players. On on these lists in the league, we got four on injured reserve, uh, one on NFI, and another four on uh, PUP. Wow! My apologies, Rich Bean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, with yeah. all that, yeah, with all that being, hey, you know what, man? And I, I tell you, man. With all that being said, man, go ahead, like the video, comment on the video, share the video, man. But. You you look at what where we're at right now, man. We we need some help, and we need anywhere we can get it, man. And the Matt Patricia Bowl, you right, man. That is is absolutely trash, man. I I don't want him, to, and I don't want the refs to be on his side either because he they, it's the Matt Patricia Bowl, and, and they were playing we, in, New, in New England, and in, in New England. So I mean, but luckily it's that it's earlier uh, uh, enough. It's outside. It's still probably warm up there in New England. But with all that being said, man. Now it is time to go to uh my segment, man. Everybody else's favorite uh 
segment of the show, Dessert with Your Man Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites, custom cookies and desserts for any occasion. If you like how they look, you'll love how they taste, man. Go on over to the, the Facebook link in the description below, man. If you don't do the Facebook thing, you can uh, email her directly at delightfulbites18 at gmail.com or go over to TikTok and Instagram and check out all that beautiful dessert footage. Delightful Bites, get your cookie on. All right, man. Jared Goff and Jamal Williams have a distinction. They are the two leading players in their categories for scoring. Jared Goff has the most passing touchdowns in the NFL, and Jamal Williams has the most rushing touchdowns in the NFL. Wow. When would we say that? What have we been the tops in the as far as one of the tops in the league in rushing? How long has that been? I mean, you look, I mean, <laughs> uh, what? What? I see. I mean, what? Jared Goff has he is tied with um with I believe it's Justin Herbert and Josh Allen. Uh, let me make sure I got this right. Uh no, he is actually uh, he's tied with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, excuse me, with four touchdown passes. Mm. All three of them have 11 touchdown passes. Right? Uh Jared Goff is also uh, I think he's like <laughs> third or fourth in the league in yards. He's third in the league in yards. <laughs> um but rushing Jamal Williams uh is tops in the league uh by himself with six touchdowns. Uh, mm. so you look at this the Lions defense, I mean offense, man. We've had we finally have some good, decent balance on the offense, man. Our defense is just the trash. <laughs> I mean, you look at it, but I, I'm loving what we're doing on the offensive side of the ball, man. Ben Johnson, someone said something the other day uh on um on Twitter, and they were like, Ben Johnson may be the one that gets snatched up next because of the way that he's coaching the Lions offense. Because they he's getting a lot of love in the coaching circles, man. For us to be the like the number one rated offense in the league right now, I mean, I mean, we're top five and we're top five in passing, and we're six in rushing. I can't remember, mm-hmm. and we're number one in points scored, and, and our number one RB hurt. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you look at that, man. Um, it, it's just crazy. Uh, but congratulations to those guys, man, for you know stepping up. We just got to get something on the other side of the ball, man, because we are a flaming pile of hot garbage on the defensive side of the ball. So with that being said, man, that's your dessert. What's your man, Kurt? Brought to you by Delightful Bites, custom cookie desserts for any occasion. If you like how they look, you'll love how they taste. Delightful Bites. Get your cooking on. All right, man, let's get quick on a walk on over to the Wall of Fame, baby. First up, we got my man. Big Marcus or everything King, man. He's on that bronze member wall of fame. Detroit Drew is over there. Pistons season's getting ready. It's preseason's already uh, going on. So if you get yourself some Pistons content, go to Detroit, Detroit Drew or everything King, man. Both of those guys do a great job with their Piston content, man. So go check those guys out, man. And our silver members, we got my man, Cap Ice Cold, John Martin, Henry Wallace, and Mr. Scotty the Bear. Ha, 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 ha. Baguettes and all that. What's up, Frenchie? What's going on, brother? And our gold members, we got North and Ken, man. Mr. Rough and Raw himself, Larry McQuiston, Mr. Reliable Michael Huck, Michael Lewis. I'm glad that we saw Lady Lauren or Deuce Baggett. We know she's fine. She was on the line this later the other night, man. Glad to see you okay down there. I know she was in the storm of that path, uh, path of that storm down there in Florida. We got the Jazzy one, Paul Giroux, the tornado out there in Utah, and the doctor, Dr. Detroit. He is always <laughs> in. To become a member of the Wall of Fame, click that join and now button in the description. Now it's time for final thoughts, man. My man, my mellow, get on the mic because you know you eat Honolulu Blue Jello and give me your final thoughts for today's show. <laughs> um, shout out to everything, King, man. I'll be checking them out. Um, I checked out, um, well, I'll be checking them out. Um, and it's Pistons, uh, preseason game tonight. Excited for that. I just want to check them out, see the young guys. But, um, of course, have a great Tuesday. Um, we can improve everywhere, man. It's going 45 on me. We don't need no improvements because we threw, we actually scored with the 51 if you want to be technical or whatever it is because we threw one to the other team. So I feel like we can improve everywhere, especially defense, but offense can need, uh, use a few tweaks as well. And, yeah, of, of course, course, shout out to Coach Mike, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Coach Mike and his wife, man. She's having that procedure, man. So uh, shout out to him and, 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 and hopefully everything goes uh, smoothly in their procedure, man. And, and shout out to – uh all our Lions fans, everyone for joining us right here on Detroit Lions on the Proud Your Home for Detroit Lions News and Rumors, man. Uh, it's Cancer Awareness Month, man. My fellas, man, 
get yourself checked out for your prostate cancer. Get your killing check, all that stuff, man. Especially you getting the age where you're getting to be around 40 years old, man. It's also it's so important to get your prostate and your colon check, man, because especially in the African American community, those things are definitely killers. And we don't get it checked out enough, man. Hey, uh, it's one of those things, man. Get yourself checked out. My man Shannon Sharp just said the other day, man, he didn't get himself checked out, man. He might not be here. So go ahead, get yourself mm. checked out, man. And, and, and you know, it, it's it is imperative that that's something I've had uh, men in my family have had prostate cancer and had those had to get those things removed, but they caught it early enough where they were able to have productive lives uh going forward. So get yourself checked out, man. So it is two piece Tuesday, taco Tuesday, or like my man LL tells you, man, sometimes you can get a dollar coney on a Tuesday. So go ahead, man. Enjoy your lunch, man. It's Tuesday. The grind is getting a little bit harder right now. But you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Take a deep breath, man. Get refocused if you need to, man. Because, you know, work is important, but so are you, man. And make sure you take care of yourself, man. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your job. That's just what it is, man. Because work gonna always be there, man. Supervisors, man, take care of your people. Because the work gonna be there, man. Yeah. Uh, but because if your people ain't right, you, they can't get the job done either. So, with all that being said, man, get this <laughs> napkin, man. Because I know you had a two piece, you had tacos, whatever you had for Tuesday, man. The crumbs off your face, man. Finish your drink and get back to work, baby. And whatever you're doing, life, you got to boss up. Fall out and be the best version of you that you can be. For my fella, LL Cool Tones and Coach Mike, who's not here today, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holla at you real soon. We love you, Jim.